the war in some ways dependent on which neighboring country they're near when they're fighting, whether it's getting supplies in or who the combatants are. Well, of course. I mean, you have, uh, in, in the United States, has close relationships with, with countries that are that are, you know, regard this as critical to their futures beyond what, what the future of, holds for Syria. So Turkey and Jordan are working closely with the United States and the CIA on these programs to try to support these moderate groups. And Andrew, uh, the Turkish parliament has decided to extend its self-granted ability to intervene in Syria. Is that a significant development? Um, it, it's really hard to say. On the one hand, yes, it would seem to give legal authority uh, to the Turkish armed forces to intervene as they would see fit, but the problem really is uh, a, a part of what effort. There, there really isn't any kind of organized effort coming from the United States uh, targeting the Assad regime in order to fulfill its uh, goal to get Assad to step aside. And I think as long as that happens, Turkey and the neighboring countries will be very reticent to get involved uh, militarily. But a NATO country on the ground in Syria changes the calculus, doesn't it? Uh, I think it does. If there was an incident that would cause the Turks to, to completely intervene, that would be one thing. But I think, uh, you know, short of a massive plan to, to get Assad to step aside, I think that that will be less and less likely. Andrew Tabler, Greg Miller. Gentlemen, thank you both. Thank you. Again, the major developments of the day, a violent incident erupted in downtown Washington when a woman with a one-year-old child tried to drive her car into a barricade near the White House. That sparked a high-speed chase to the U.S. Capitol. This evening, D.C. Police Chief Kathy Lanier said Secret Service officers and later Capitol Police fired on the car at different points. As of right now, uh, we do know that there were shots fired in at least two locations during this pursuit. The pursuit was from 15th and E uh, down to 100 block of Maryland Avenue. So the pursuit went several blocks, involved both United States Secret Service and United States Capitol Police. Um, right now, the suspect in the vehicle, um, we do know, was struck by gunfire and at this point has been pronounced. So. The suspect has been pronounced at this point. Uh, the child is uh, approximately a year old and is in good condition um, and in protective custody. Police gave out no other details about the woman. Also today, day three of the federal government shutdown yielded no sign of progress toward a resolution. And at least 114 African migrants died when a crowded boat sank near a tiny Italian island. Online, better to make decisions about your financial future while your mind is still sharp. That's the advice from one of our regular business desk contributors on the Making Sense page. You can find that and more at newshour.pbs.org. And that's the news hour for tonight. On Friday, we'll have the latest on the congressional standoff over the budget. I'm Judy Woodruff. And I'm Gwen Ipo. We'll see you online and again here tomorrow evening with David Brooks and E.J. Dion. For all of us here at the PBS News Hour, thank you and good night. Major funding for the PBS News Hour has been provided by.
There's a picture up here, Mr. Wilson. They're going to be adding. Ah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. That shaded area is the addition. Three feet on the front of the garage and some feet on a, an addition. To the <laughs> Sorry about that. I just walked into a It's a 300 and squ 306 square foot addition and they're adding in front of the living room area and extending it out. The, the siding will match the existing siding with um, lap siding. And because they have to meet the parking requirement, they also bumped out the garage by three feet. Oh, okay. Do you have an elevation? That you can I, I don't have an elevation, but I do have one in the file. Would you like to see an elevation of the front of the building? Okay. Happy, Mr. Wilson? <laughs> okay, great. Okay, is there a motion to approve the application? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second then to approve the application for the Lawrence Avenue addition. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And that brings us to public hearings. These are intended to provide an opportunity for public discussion on each item. And uh, the procedure is as follows. We have a staff presentation, public discussion, planning commission comments, close the public portion of the hearing and bring it back to the planning commission for further discussion and a decision. Our first item tonight is 1941st Avenue. This is uh, a request to amend the existing use permit to incorporate a bar use and allow live entertainment. Katie? Okay. Thank you, Chairman <coughs> Ruth. Um, the applicant is Pedro Salazar, who is available for any questions tonight. Um, the application is for an amendment to an existing conditional use permit to incorporate a bar use and also to allow live entertainment in the community commercial district. The applicant had requested that the hours of operation be extended between midnight to 1230 on Friday and Saturday evenings. Um, currently, the, the location is open until 10 p.m. In front of you is a picture from the from 41st Avenue, the Capitola Diner. Um, this is the interior area of the bar, and there's a lot of seating in the area. There is not a dance floor. Um, the current diner it faces 41st Avenue. It also um, it, it's in the community commercial district. To the rear of the property is Viga Street and Pearson Street. It's adjacent to a residential use. This can also be seen in our zoning map. I've highlighted in white the property boundaries for the property, and you can see the community commercial on the left and the residential zoning district to the right. So it is adjacent to zoning. Um, this picture is taken from the rear property line adjacent to the, um, the residential and I've outlined the building in yellow. There's two parking areas in between until you arrive at the building. And then th this is when I turn the camera back to show you how close this <coughs> residential is to the parking area in the rear. And this is when I step further down the road from, you can see Pearson Court, the homes right over the property line. Um, in reviewing a conditional use permit, the Planning Commission shall give due regard to the nature and condition of all adjacent uses and structures. Um, in issuing a conditional use permit, the Commission may impose requirements and conditions with respect to location, design, sitting, maintenance, and operation of the use as may be necessary for the protection of adjacent properties and in the public interest. In this review, we've had 
we are concerned about the adjacent properties being residential and the late hours of operation. To mitigate this, um, there was this application originally was reviewed by the Planning Commission on January 17th. It was continued for nine months due to prior violations. Um, in August, I reached out to Chief Escalante to get an update on the progress there, and he said there had been no additional violations. Um, but at that time, he asked that staff request a management plan to see how the, how the applicant would manage this moving forward. Um, and with that, he gave a list of conditions that he wanted to be addressed by the applicant on how they would manage um, the management plan. I asked for the management plan two weeks prior to tonight's meeting so that it would give Chief Escalante and myself enough time to review it and put in a recommendation based on the management plan. Um, within the management plan, Chief Escalante had asked for a sound management, including the monitoring and assurance that of, of no noise outside the building. He also asked for training of the employees. Um, security staff would be required and a policy and procedural manual for those security staff and then also lighting and video surveillance. Um, within our ordinances, there's an ordinance prohibiting noise through the operation of a business um, within 200 feet of any residence between the hours of 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. So that's why it's essential that there's a plan telling us how they would address that noise. Also, within the City of Capitola general plan, there's a separate section for noise and goals one and two um, talk about um, uses and making sure that uses are complementary to the existing adjacent uses so that the noise environment is compatible. For this application, staff is re recommending denial of the amendment to the existing conditional use permit to incorporate a bar use and allow live entertainment based on the lack of mitigation and management by the applicant. So it was a hard decision, but without that management plan, we thought denial was okay. the appropriate recommendation. Thank you, Katie. Thanks. Any questions for staff? The only question I have is there's not a date on Chief Escalante's uh, inter-office uh, inter memorandum. Do you have a date for that? Yeah, it was early August. Okay. I know that I sent it to the app, I forwarded it to the applicant. That's um, good enough for me. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions, TJ? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know the applicant's present here. Would you like to uh, add any anything to the staff report? Okay. If you could come up here, please, to the podium. had a letter with the conditions from the city and um, one of our employees you know wrote a, a three-page letter okay, yeah we received that well this is a, actually a new one that he oh, okay he that's a different one yeah mm -hmm. so I don't know if Th this is the mitigation is this the the management this plan okay. correct correct okay this is responding to the chief of police's request mm -hmm. have correct. you submitted that to our staff yet? no he, we I mean we just had it just now Okay, well, maybe what I'd like to suggest is you submit it to our staff and we could continue the item to bring it back to take a look at that management plan to see if it meets all the conditions. Yeah, that'd be, that, that'd be great because, you know, this was like a last minute, you know, thing because we've been busy and we can actually type this and then submit it to the staff and then, you know, okay. set up for another hearing day or something. Okay, well, it depends if the commission's willing to do that. Okay. Uh, I'd have to... I'd have to find so that out. Okay, but, so uh, submit it and then go from there. Uh, and it would, uh, just be aware, it has to be very comprehensive to meet all the requirements that the Chief of yeah. Police would like to see. Yeah, cor correct. Okay, yeah. point by point. Yeah. Okay. And that's kind of what we did, but, you know, it's just, it was a last minute thing, so. Okay. So we can, like, actually type this in the correct manner with all the okay. correct. Okay, I just have to tell you, my concern is it's a last minute thing and you've had since August to, uh, yeah. do this. I, so I, know. I, I, I don't know. know if the commission is going to be willing to give you that continuation or not because of that. Okay? Okay. So let us open the public hearing then. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. And uh, if you could identify yourself too for the record. Uh, my name is uh, Jorge Diaz. I'm his brother-in-law. Okay. Great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.
Okay, anyone wishing to speak on this item? Okay, seeing no one, then we'll close the public portion, bring it back to the commission for discussion. I'd like to hear what staff and Chief Escalante have to say about um, continuing this, whether they would recommend that or I'm not inclined to um, feel favorably about that, but I'd like to hear what staff has to say. Good evening, Commissioners. Chief Escalante with the Police Department. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, a couple of the concerns that we have is this type of activity or this type of use uh, comes with a lot of risk. And there are several risks, not only just to the patrons, but to the community and to the neighbors. And so the purpose of having a plan, a well thought out plan, is to address those issues because you need somebody who's going to pay strict close attention to activity that's going on inside and outside because this type of activity can draw additional crime and additional public safety <coughs> issues. So from our perspective, I would uh, agree with the planning department in that we would deny this uh, primarily because of the past history that we did have. Now, so far this year, we've had no issues, which has been a good thing. Uh, but my concern is if we, uh, in my experience, you bring somebody in who has the experience of dealing with the issues associated with live music and mixing with alcohol, uh, somebody who knows how to manage those pro those problems and without some sort of plan and without that being done in a timely manner that brings a significant concern to us. Okay. Any questions for the chief? Thank you, Reed. Mm -hmm. I, I would add that as far as the planning department is concerned that we would be fine working with the applicant, although I do have concerns that the amount of mitigation measures and operational measures that we would impose on that use to control it to ensure land use compatibility um, may be rather imposing for this applicant and may they may find that difficult. One of the things we, we could do, we could deny it without prejudice and then they could bring the application back yeah. any time they complete this this requirement. And I'd also like to add that I did reach out to the applicant regularly to ask about the like getting a management plan and to the extent that I've reached out to the um, the property owner as well when I couldn't get in touch with the applicant and um, also speaking with staff at the Capitola diner so there it, it hasn't it wasn't just one conversation when it the Friday that it was due I reached out and at that point you know they still had another two weeks to bring it in so yeah, I there think has that's been a big a concern the, the lack of response yeah. any other comments from the Planning Commission I'm inclined to accept staff's recommendation uh, I feel strongly that they've had their boots on the ground with this applicant knowing what's going on and I'm willing to accept their recommendation on this so I would move approval of staff's recommendation. Okay, we have a motion then to approve the staff, rec staff recommendation which is to deny the application. Uh, is there a second? I would second. Okay, we have a second. Uh, if this passes, Mr. Salazar, it would mean that you would have to wait a, an entire year before you could reapply for uh, the permit that you want. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the application is denied. Okay. That brings us to item 5B, which is 100 Central Avenue, uh, plan revisions to a previously approved design permit for a new story single family dwelling. This was before us at our last meeting after it was discovered the house was not built according to the plan. Some revisions were made. We have to determine whether the revisions satisfy our request. Katie? Okay. The location of the project is at 100 Central Avenue. Um, there was a condition of approval number two that was made by the Planning Commission stating that the Planning Commission must approve any significant modifications to the size or exterior appearance of the structure. Um, on September 5th, the Planning Commission continued the item, as you stated, and directed the applicant to work with their architect to incorporate design modifications which would more closely resemble the original approval. Um, at that time, the the applicant spoke toward his desire to have a Tudor style home in which they were trying to achieve through the change that they made to their home. And in my research of Tudor style homes, you typically would see an asymmetric design, cross gabled, steeply pitched roof, 
um, which is there. A decorative half timbers would be present. Tall, narrow windows and multiple groups, and also decorative chimneys. It also, depending on where it's located in the United States or other, re there's regional aspects such as brick um, that could be incorporated as well, but typically isn't found here. Um, I have each elevation to within my presentation that when you're discussing, I think it would be helpful to go back to these, so feel free to ask me to review any of these. This is the west elevation from Central. Can you review the last slide and what was the, photo, the picture on the bottom? What does that represent? The bottom is the home at 100 Central. As it, curr as it is currently? As it is currently, yep. yep. Thank you. And the top was a picture out of an example of Tudor style homes. So I just want to show the cross gables and the, um, the decorative half timbers and stucco. Um, so in the new proposal, I have the original is on the top, the as built are to the bottom left, and then the revisions, proposed revisions are to the right. The applicant is proposing additional half timbers. Um, additional trim around the windows on the second story, shutters at the entryway, and corbel at the entryway for the hangover. And this is the west elevation seen from central. Um, on the south elevation, the applicant is proposing a flower box. There, oh, there are also flower boxes on the previous elevation. Also trim around the upper, the second story windows and half timber along the corner. The east elevation, they're proposing, they're bringing back the half timbers that were in the original design and also proposing trim around the window. And the north elevation, they're also reintroducing the half timber and trim around the windows and then also the corbel at the entry to the home. Um, the our staff's recommendation is that the Planning Commission consider the applicant's proposed modifications and determine if they have adequately addressed the Commissioner's concerns. If the Commission is satisfied with the changes, staff recommends approval of the application. Um, and I also have these elevations that are larger if you'd like to use them of this is what the home looks like today with the proposed revisions to the right. I think they might be e easier for to use. And also on the west elevation, I have those two photos, of the most predominant elevations. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Katie. Any questions for Katie? So what they're adding are the half timbers and the uh, trim around the windows. The uh, flower boxes are already installed. The flower boxes are installed. They were added after after, after, I think between the last meeting and this meeting, so they have been added. And the lighting fixture on the south elevation? Has been added. Has been added already. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Okay. This is a public hearing then. One yeah. more. One more. Can you, or maybe it's more appropriate that the applicant answer this, uh, talk about how the half timbers will be affixed to the side? I think that would be more appropriate for the applicant. Okay, thank you. Okay, is the applicant or the representative here? Uh, my name is Derek Van Alstein. I am the designer of this project and uh, I'm representing the applicant. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, I think we've gone a good ways to mitigating the differences between uh, where the house was and where you'd like it to be. Um, <clears throat> I think that uh, there's no question that it's different from what was originally proposed, but I, um, I think we've gone a good ways to making it um, be a lot more appealing and to, and to having the elevations uh, repeat themselves on, on all four sides. Um, so with that, I'd like to answer any questions you might have. And I'd, I'd urge you to uh, either give us an up or down vote tonight, and if uh, you'd like to make conditions, um, perhaps there's a way that we can work with staff to 
take care of those conditions. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Van Alstein? Uh, my question to staff was how the half timbers will be affixed. Are they? It's the plaster going to be uh, routed out and? It's it's very difficult because once you interrupt the plaster, you end up having to interrupt the water seal in places. Um, fairly difficult thing to do without replastering the whole exterior. Um, <clears throat> there is a way that we can affix the half timbering to the stucco without interrupting the stucco, going back and re it after it and repainting all those edges so that they disappear. Um, <clears throat> and I think that's probably going to be the best way to do it without uh, we're going back and interrupting the stucco and, and ha standing a chance of, of interrupting the water seal. And the appearance is just the same in the end, correct? I think it would be. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, unless you were absolutely looking for that, you wouldn't see it. I, I doubt that you would. Thank you. Mm -hmm. TJ, any questions? No comments? questions for Derek. No. Well, Mr. Van Alstyne, at least for me personally, I think you're about halfway there. And w what would satisfy me would be some additional half timbers on each elevation. So I think if uh, if you added some ad some additional half timbers at the same span there to the left, and on the other ele elevations, I believe it's the the east and north elevations that have no half timbers at all. For example, on that uh, that portion of the elevation on the right side, if there are some half timbers below the windows there and uh, on the other elevations too, kind of with similar spacing. I, I, I think we wouldn't have any problem with that as a condition. Just, just so I'm clear, you're on the uh, south elevation? So you're talking about, were, were, were you looking for more half timbers? He's got the corner trim, but um, in the yeah, middle, right in the middle? The So yeah, just be on that part under the windows there. And did you request any more on this elevation, on the west elevation? To the left of the of the window there. It shows one there on the in the drawings. Yeah, see, it shows one there already. Yeah, I think you can get to there. You, there's room for another short one there, just at the same spacing, just to continue that theme all the way across that facade. Okay. And then there's a, there's a couple elevations that don't have any on the upper floor. And if we could add some similar spacing to those elevations, like those elevations there on the second floor. So they're adding the half timbers above the window that would be consistent with the rest? Right. Do you just want them below going straight down? Just so that theme is the same or on all four sides of the house. I mean, originally the board and bat was proposed on all four sides of the house. so. I'm no, I, I understand. I mean, yeah, just continue that theme all the way around. For me, it becomes a little bit subjective because well, it I'm, is subjective. If, if yeah. I'm designing the house, <laughs> I don't know that I want too many more. Um, I understand where you're trying to go, but I think adding too many almost takes. I don't know. That's just so. I think it becomes very subjective of what I, my recommendation would be. Let staff work it out with. Derek to make sure it's consistent and well, like like you're talking I about this, on, the south, on, the, box on the south on the south on the south elevation there below the the windows on uh -huh. the um, towards the east there I mean if it's my house I don't know other than the trim how you add a half timber in there and make it look like it's not just because it can't really go um, a, too much in height, of, you know, towards the windows, you're going to run into. The, uh, and he's adding the trim below the windows, so to me, it almost. Well, if you look at the board and bat, if you removed like every third board and bat, it it kind of have that that feature to it. Chairperson Ruth, I would suggest that if you'd like, we could have um, a planning commissioner review the plans with the planner to the satisfaction of a planning commissioner and the planner at the time that it's submitted, if that's of help. 
It depends if other commissioners are all the commissioners are willing to give someone that. Well, I think we're all going to have different opinions. That's, yeah. That would be the, yeah. my part on that. Is we, we could all tell him a whole different story of what we want his house to be. I would feel comfortable it, with the architect knowing the intention of adding more and adding the amount that he feels is will look good on the on the each each of the facades. I, I don't have a problem with his taste in figuring out how to do that. Okay. So then our, our goal would just to be a consistent on all four elevations with the spacing of the half timbers. Okay? Yeah. Are we fairly clear on that, Mr. Van Olsen? Very clear, thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Is there a motion? I'd make a motion uh, that we go ahead and approve this um, with a caveat that uh, Mr. Van Alstein uh, will work to um, try to meet our concerns of having it consistent with half timbers on all the elevations. Can we add that as a condition? Yeah, caveat's a condition. Condition. Yeah, I'll, I'll be more grammatically correct. <laughs> okay. Is that a second, Gail? That's a second. Okay. We have a motion then in a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Van Alsing. Okay, that brings us to uh, the director's report. Rich? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a few brief items. Uh, at the last Planning Commission meeting in September, uh, the Commission asked how much money was in the city's tree fund. Um, as of last month, there was $21,300 in that fund. And yeah. did you figure out it, whether that can only be used in, you know, what are the, what's the criteria for a disbursement of funds from that account? It's generally for tree replacement type projects if we want to add trees to a park or street trees, those types of things. So it's hmm. solely intended to provide more tree coverage throughout the city. Have we ever dipped into that fund that you could see? Uh, not in the time that I've been here. Um, I would have to verify whether or not we have in the past or what projects we funded with it. Um, my guess is we've probably done something, but I, I'd have to verify. Okay. Maybe we used it to replace the palm tree that was cut down on the <laughs> Capitol Avenue. Has that been replaced yet? I haven't noticed. Which, which one? It'd be in front of uh, the candy store uh. on Capitol Avenue. Who? What happened to it? Uh, I, I'm assuming it was diseased or something. The city. Yeah, there's one they cut down. I, I, I can't remember if they replaced it. I know they replaced two uh, smaller queen palms out on Capitola, but I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, How long ago was it? It was cut down last week. Yeah. Really? I'll look I into think it. it died. So maybe they can spend the money replacing that if they haven't already. I'm sure thank it's going to be replaced. Thank you for following up on that. I appreciate it. Oh, I sure. have it on my list, too. Anything um, else, Rich? Yeah, a few other items. Um, we do have a general plan advisory committee meeting later this month on the 29th at 7 p.m. Uh, that meeting will be to receive comments from the GPAC on the draft general plan. Um, last week we brought an in-lieu parking fee program to the City Council. The Council did approve it, but with amendments. Uh, how the program would work is it would set aside 57 spaces for hotel uses with valet service only. Um, the fees would be determined at a time an application came in. So we're bringing a, a revised administrative policy to the council next week for their adoption. Could that policy also apply to the proposal on Depot Hill? Not as directed by the city council. We did okay. talk about the service area, and they wanted to limit it Just to the, the village, village, central village area. Okay. Um, we are also going to be bringing an item on village signs and code enforcement to the city council at the meeting of October 24th. And so that one, I'm sure, will generate an, a lot of interest. Your commission has spent considerable time on that in the past. Um, and then finally, the Monarch Cove project. Um, I'm sure you've all heard about it. We received lots of comments during the public scoping period. Uh, that period has now ended. Um, our consultant is beginning to draft the environmental impact report based on a lot of the comments received. Um, our best estimate for the Planning Commission seeing that project would be sometime in early 2014. Who's doing the uh, historic review of that? It's a company, they're a subconsultant for Rincon Consultants. Um, they are located, I believe, in Oregon. They're historical professionals. 
Has that already has that contract already been signed and yeah, it's the con all done? We signed a contract with the prime, they select their subs. And okay. we'll look at it, we'll peer review it. I would really like to have that peer reviewed in this yeah. community and I would hopefully I would suggest respectfully that a woman named Susan Lehman, who's very familiar with that property, having worked with it off and on for many years, uh, be considered for that. Thank you. Will do. And Rich, I, I have a question. Um, at the EIR meeting, um, it was noted that, um, I don't want to use the same words, but that it wasn't the video, there was no video and really no scribe that, to capture minutes. Um, is there a way that at future meetings that we could videotape it like we do with these meetings? Is that something maybe not be broadcast, but at least... Did yeah, we, we certainly could. We did receive a couple of comments about that. We did have three people taking notes. Um, I'm not exactly sure what a professional scribe is other than a court recorder, but right. there were people that were very... I think the video does a great job of being able to go back to see what the true intent was, what, and I don't know what the cost of the city would be for doing that. But I'm not sure. We did talk about it at the city council meeting and in the future we would record them. Um, there you go. You know, typically those types of meetings don't get so much interest and they're not recorded in other agencies I've worked for they're generally not recorded it's more informal yeah. but certainly it's something that we can do to you know improve transparency. Well I, I think I think the transparency but also to I think it just assists the city um, to make sure that you know what was said was said and, and uh, just protects us I think from the city as well as maybe assuring that the folks that their points are being taken. Sure. Okay anything else Rich? That's it for me. Okay. Any commission communications? No, I'm glad to hear Ron's interest in the traffic. Because <laughs> I saw the way that was going. I heard a train coming. <laughs> well, <laughs> he'll be a good addition. No, you already to got it. the environmental thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know they dumped that. The bullet. Hmm? Yeah. They dumped that environmental they commission. They did. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're, bringing they're bringing it back, though. They're bringing it back, Without a planning commission appointment. Oh. That's right. Oh. There's a lot of discussions take place at the traffic commission, so Ron will... Be a really good addition to that committee. <laughs> okay, if there's no other uh, items, uh, we will adjourn. Uh, and thanks for. You got a chance to sample the I rolls did. too. So fresh. The fish is amazing. I mean, it like melts in your mouth. It's so fresh. And they get mystery boxes on like Thursday where you can just go and, <laughs> and, and check it <laughs> and, all out. And let the chef just, you know, make you something. Did you have the rolls? We as well? didn't. When I go to sushi, I tend to like to just get plain fish. I got the bluefin toro, which just melts in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, excited to order that giant clam. Mm -hmm. You hear the chef give it a slap to firm it up, and mm -hmm. they it is live. It is <laughs> live. <laughs> Things and are a live there. <laughs> it's very sweet and it's really firm, which I like. And I really like also the uni that we get. Mm -hmm. I tend to mm -hmm. try that. That's my barometer of all sushi restaurants because right. uni is something that can be really bad if it's not good. <laughs> so it was very fresh and delicious there. And you can see the live sea urchin. They have a little display. Mm -hmm. So you know it's fresh and delicious. And what about the atmosphere? It's like a club. You go mm -hmm. in there, I mean, it is so much fun. It really is. That You're is not going to go and have a quiet dinner there. Right. That's one of the things that I told my uh, dinner companion was, you almost, the music makes you want to get up and start dancing almost. <laughs> Please, I just dance like, off all the sushi yeah, that you just 